You're listening to the Visually Stunning Movie Podcast, the place to come for movie reviews, along with some extra fun talk about movie-related topics like box office and awards. You can find us on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, and basically any place else you can find podcasts. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter for even more content. If you like what we do, feel free to share us with your friends, like and leave feedback wherever you listen to us, and let us know what you think. Now, let's get on with the show. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Visually Stunning Movie Podcast. I'm Mark, that's Ryan. Hi, Ryan. Hey guys. Uh, So, Ryan, Robert Robert Downey Jr. did not get nominated for an Oscar for Avengers Endgame. And uh, Mm. he he put out a movie uh, that opened this weekend. And I don't think he's going to get an an Oscar Mm. nomination for this one either. Doolittle, a new Uh fresh hip now take on Dr. Doolittle. But but still set in the past in Queen Victoria, yeah. Yes, yeah. Queen Queen Victoria. I say hip, new, fresh now, only in terms of dialogue and jokes. Oh goodness, is that is that what those were? Okay, let's talk. <laughs> this this movie is it's interesting. I, I told you not to spoil it for me and you just text me. You go, it's a movie and you're not wrong. Mm. You, you, you're not wrong. It is actually 90 minutes of, of filmed material that was been replayed in a theater for paying customers. I guess that's a movie. Not, not RDJ's finest hour in cinema. No, but you know what? I'm going to, I did well, gosh, see, this is complicated because he, he, he's, he's the reason why this movie was made. His, his production company is behind it as well. So that's where you kind of get this, this – I can't blame the actor half of, of this. He's not the biggest – he's not the problem with this movie. But he's one of them. He – well. Sorry, his choices – are one of the problems with this film. Well, I, there's, there's aspects of it. See, I almost, okay, we, let's just get it out there. I don't think either of us think this movie works. No, not, not as a thing. No. And, uh, for me, the, it, it's kind of interesting knowing the history of how this film was made and, and, and kind of being able to, I guess, somewhat guess, you know, the, the, the initial trailers for the film made it look more like an action thriller sort of, thing or more actiony film and apparently at one point it was more of that but it was decided that it needed to be more of a comedy um well that pendulum swung and, hard and yeah and they did 21 additional days of shooting to do that i have a sinking suspicion that also most of the animals dialogue was rewritten to be as absolutely annoying and never as funny as they think it is this film would have worked far better if the animals sounded like animals and robert downey jr and all the other people just responded to what these animals were saying we wouldn't have to know what they said it's not necessary you can tell based on what is said back to them in this film and it would have been so much so much easier to digest um, you can have Polly, who is the the talking um, parrot. But par- yeah, you can. Polly can talk. That's fine. That makes sense. But the uh, the 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 moment uh, our gorilla opens his mouth and starts talking is when you suddenly realize, oh, we're in trouble. Yeah, it's a uh... <laughs> man. It just, I guess. The idea that it needed to be more humorous, I guess, to make it more palatable to children. But they did ne- swing it really hard away from action adventure to s- snarky animals, which kids are gonna. Don't get me wrong, kids are gonna love this because it's ninety minutes of snarky animals. But oh, you know, you made the same argument that you, you're making here about the animals that you made about Venom. About how you wish <laughs> yeah. we had never heard Venom. We just had to deal with Tom Hardy acting around nothing 
which would be him hearing Venom, but not us hearing Venom. Yeah. And I, in Venom, I think it would have, it would have maybe been cute for a little bit, but they'd have had to rework that a lot. This, it would have worked a lot better. And, and I, you know, and, and the, the problem that they had with this one is early on, they clearly decided we're going to cast a lot of famous people as the voices of these animals. Yep. And we can get their names on posters. We can, you know, say, look at our wonderful cast. Look at this. Whereas if they just sounded like animals, suddenly the cast is you Robert know, Downey three Jr. people. Yeah. Yeah. Robert Downey Jr. And uh, a few people nobody probably knows much about. Right. And and to be honest with you, I think that would have been a far better approach. But at what point, you know, or basically once they've decided they're going to hire all these people to do the voices, it's not like after all that they can go back and say, oh, by the way, we're cutting all of you guys out. Well, they can, but it, they still would have had to pay them. Yes, and 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 I, and I just don't. But I I think it would have been it could have been a PR nightmare too. Yeah, it. it I it, don't know. It could have been. Well, just, either way, anyway. I guess the 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 thing that I saw today, uh, the story I saw was that they did do the reshoots. One of those reshoots was the worst scene in this film, and I, I don't hope wanna, it wasn't. Is it, it? Is it the dragon scene? It's the dragon scene. And I don't want to, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be the one to, to ruin it for people if they haven't all, already had it ruined. All I'm going to say is there is no way to fix the dragon scene. But, of all the scenes in the movie, you could go in and you could fix by taking certain things out or, you know, very quite easily. There's nothing you can salvage from, from most of uh, There might be a little bit of the, no, I, I don't know. I'm not even going to go. I, it's a terrible scene. It is, it is just. A tr- I watched I, that that I cringed. I was watching. I was like, "There's no way." And then you just watch, and you watch, and then that whole thing that that joke runs entirely too long. On top of the fact that it's terrible. Yeah, it's a bad joke, and it keeps going and going and going. Yeah, that that's easily the worst scene in the movie, without without even question. Now. Having said all of that, I think everyone out there figured out that if we're going to put a number on this, it's not going to be very uh-huh. high. Let me just say, <sighs> but I still, I still stand by the fact that kids are going to like it because it's snarky talking animals, and and it's still a better movie than Cats. Well, that's yes, to a certain, it's still more watchable than Cats, most certainly. I don't think the talent level is the same as Cats, but that's an entirely different debate. Yeah, no, I, I, geez. I do think kids will like this, although I would argue kids would like it if it was people reacting to animals making noises, and it also would have made it more palatable for adults. So by swinging it totally in the direction of crazy, snarky, tar- talking animals, they, they actually have reduced their audience rather than, I'm sure, in their heads, thought, well, but kids will love this. Yeah, but th- th- there comes a point where parents will hear how bad this movie is, mm-hmm. And they won't take them. No, because they don't want to sit through it. They don't want to sit through it. And they figure, well, you know what? At some point, it will come on Netflix. It will come on Hulu or it will come on whatever. We've already paid for Netflix or Hulu or whatever. We can just sit the kids in front of that. We can go in the other room. Fact. We can do any number of things. Because you, you can't, you know, it's just that this film is going to tank. And it's going to be a huge financial loss for Universal, who probably spent more on those reshoots than most films. Well, the, well, more than more than it would co- it will make this opening weekend. They probably put more money into just those reshoots than they'll make. Yeah, and and, th- and that is horrendous. Well, and the other thing I saw was that apparently. RDJ got his twenty million for this picture, and points. It's like so. Even if it manages to break even, he's going to eat more of the profit, making this movie even less productive yeah. from a box office standpoint. And I don't blame him for that. You, well, his production company. That seems kind of self-serving that he's paying it himself is, yeah. twenty million dollars, but. That's that's just a that's this is just a mind bogglingly bad deal all the way around. And it'll so it'll probably do financially worse well, I don't know if it'll do financially worse than cats. 
but it might. I think it's in the same area. But it, uh, but even if it does, yeah. it's still a more watchable film than Cats, which is it's it's insane when you start looking at films True. like that. But I, you know, and I, I think, I think, I think that cats, cats. I think the both films were doomed from their pre-production period. I think Cats was never going to be anything more than it was, but I think Doolittle could have been more than what it is, and that's I think what's that's more annoying uh, is that it 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 just felt like a lot of bad decisions happened yeah and and that essentially from what i understand that the, the director didn't have the film con- completely taken away but pretty darn close yeah they they brought in what two other directors to do so, the reshoots not because he wasn't available because they wanted someone else to do the reshoots yeah and i so, was just like dang yeah and and Whatever they reshot, which if if that dragon scene is a reshoot, that is horrific. I I think I read that it was. And and I mean, and really, the dialogue that comes out of the animals' mouth mouths is about as bad as I've ever seen in a movie. It's so self serving, and it almost has absolutely nothing to do with the film itself. No, what what story there is is not dependent on their dialogue at all. And, you know, there, gosh, I guess it's frustrating because you see where it, what it could have been. Yeah. And, and you just feel like they, they made so many bad decisions. You know, I love that it starts off as an animated film. I, I did like that. I mean, I, I, you couldn't do the whole film like that. Well, you could, but they wouldn't. I liked that. I don't mind the ch- children actors. I think Robert Downey Jr. has the weirdest accent that, you know, yeah. I have no idea what accent he's doing. I, I read but, Welsh, but okay. it was, it was, uh, that was not his that. best. And it was, yeah, <laughs> but I don't, and, and, um, Michael Sheen, uh, that's a great hamming, villain wasted. Yeah. Hamming it up. He did everything but twirl the mustache. Yeah. I don't know. They're just yeah. It's just not a good good movie, and and maybe it's better than Cats. But I I I, I mean I you know yes I'm floating around a five on this rather than like a two. But that's a begrudging still, five. Yes, it's a five that that I wish that that they'd let me go in, edit it, change all the to monkey sounds, figure out something other than the dragon scene that they have. Yeah. And maybe the film works. It's not going to be a great movie, even at that point. But I think there's a considerable distance between what it is and and working, yeah. really working. And no, I, and, I, and, I know, agree. So I totally agree. Yeah, it's just I, five is like my ceiling on this. And you could talk me. You could here's. The, I could probably could talk probably you talk, down. You could talk me into a three. Probably. Yeah, and that's probably I mean, where that's probably closer to where I'm at. I mean, once I mean, once you get into the the your once you try to nuance your really negative rating, it, that speaks you know that speaks volumes. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm probably close to a three. It's just it's just not just not great at all at all. It's not even good. I mean, it's it's it can see good from where it is, but. Oh well, what can you do? Even even uh, even Robert Downey Jr. can't win them all, I guess. Uh wow. Well, I don't know. It sounds his paycheck was enough to make him win, regardless. So. I think he's going to be living off freaking Avengers residuals forever. Uh, he signed a first look deal with somebody, HBO maybe, for a year. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. I don't know why they would. But anyway, I don't know. There we are. There we are. So, couple of couple of threes. I talked Ryan down to a three from a five. Damn. You were being generous. That's all I know. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> we've got uh, we've got another film on tap. We're going to talk about next time. Um, there's a film coming out next week called The Gentleman that I hope we get to see and we get to talk about in time for y'all to 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 listen before you see it. Then we've got Sundance. And then we move on into further into movie season, which there's some good ones come up in the next few month or so. I have a list. 
I have a list of films I want to see. But yeah, The Gentleman is definitely up there. So hopefully we get to that one. Till next time, I'm Mark. That's Ryan. Bye, Ryan. See you guys. And we will talk to you all later.